Hello and welcome to my studio. Woo! Okay, so I had another intro, but um, it was way too long. It was like 11 minutes long, but it really was just me cleaning up and being prepared to paint. And I thought, that's really boring. I may have talked about a few things, which I'll do right now. Real quick, I'll do it. Let me find what I'm looking for. I purchased this extender. It's called Anita's Extender, and I got it from Hobby Lobby, and it was by the craft paint section. And I thought I would get it and give it a try, and I actually, now that I'm on the other end, I really did enjoy this. It was really, really nice. I also use, hold up please, I use an airbrush medium. This thing is beat up. Right here, it's an airbrush medium by Liquitex, and this helps thin out my paints. So I probably talked about that, but that's the stuff that I use. Anyway, come on, you know, get a snack, and uh, pull up a chair, and just relax and wa watch me work. Bye, see you on the other side. So I'm going to start to contour and shape up the face of this girl. I'm looking at her right now. She's very pale, she's almost white, so, but she's not totally white. So let's give her a little bit of skin tone just a slight hue of skin tone make sure you wipe off these brushes before you use them in a previous video I said that I use these drop cloths also from the Dollar Tree you can find a lot of good stuff at the Dollar Tree to work with so I'm going to grab a blend of skin tone and start with that and these are pan pastels I don't want too much so I just sort of rub the excess off on my hand and I don't want to get it in her hair so I'm just gonna kind of give her like a once-over with a little bit of skin tone and you know I sprayed her I might want to try to put my glasses on where did I put them okay. uh, I need to get in there hold on all right Oh, now I can see really well. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of give her just a little bit of fleshiness. There's a, there's a hair on her. Really? Come on. Oh, there we go. A tiny, tiny bit of fleshiness. I'll worry about the body later. But right now, we're just going to focus on the face. My light is really annoying me. Hold on just a second. Let me adjust. We're going to try this angle for a minute. I think this is actually going to work out. I kind of move the, I kind of move things around. I know I'm crooked. My light is, ugh, let me pop. Ooh, I think I may have found a good spot. Yeah. Let's see here. Am I recording? I am recording. Okay, good. Awesome. All right, yay. Ah, that was hard. Okay, I'm putting some fleshy tones on her because she's white, but she's not totally white. I don't wanna bump the phone with my head. Not on the tip of her nose. Some little black hairs that just sort of wanna happen. So that's just a tiny bit of fleshiness right there that's all I needed I just sort of went over it and now I'm gonna go I'm looking at her and I'm going to pick up what color do I want I think I'm gonna pick up this mixture where it's kind of like what color is that I don't know if I can describe it you know what I'll do because I'll just sit here and uh, fool around with it and try to try to come up with the colors that I'm using and uh, we'll never get this done so I'm not going to say what color it is I will put it in um, in a little caption right on the screen so just look for that so let's turn her head to the side and give her some contouring on those cheeks we're just looking for a very light contour we don't want to take away the whiteness of her. I 
have to buff out some lines that were there. Okay, so let's draw in her cheekbones a little bit. Now with the cheekbones, sometimes I like to come in with a smaller brush. Same color. It's a mixture of several different things, so... Um, there is a main color that I like to use, though, in that one. Especially for shading and contouring. It's just a really good color. I keep this guy here for dusting off excess. That's what that's for, too. And there we go. Same thing here. You want to just sort of, you know, it's kind of like doing your makeup. If you do makeup. It's kind of like that. Uh, contouring your face. A little bit more so because your face already has some color and, and stuff. But you get what I mean. I'm going to go around the hairline and then I just want to cover it up because I don't want, I don't want it in the hair. Just a little bit around here. And up here along her hairline. And now I want to shape the nose out a little bit. And it looks like there's some gray tones in the picture and the painting that I'm going to be working with as well, like a blending of some flesh tone with a little bit of a gray tone. She's a vampire, so I'm just going to come in here and kind of like mark it off. Oop, painting is going away. And then I'll take the brush and I'll blend it out so it's not too much color. It looks like I got a little bit too much on top, but I can fix that. Plus, you're going to want to spray this after you have worked on it for a while. You're going to want to go back and spray it and uh, then come back and even contour some more. It's like um, anything else you do in art, it's a layering process. I got a little bit too much color on the top. I'm going to grab a Q-tip. I'm going to kind of buff off that top so it doesn't have too much um, color right there. I'm being conservative because once you put the paint on and everything, all of this other stuff will kind of like be lighter. Does that make any sense? Right now, I'm going straight on white, so I'm being conservative. All right, right here, we got a little bit of color, and then she has some color under here. Let me just get that off. The problem is, is I have too much color in this brush. I need a clean brush. So I'm having some over blending issues. All right, let's see. Do I have a clean one? Is there a clean baby in here for dust? Maybe this guy. Nobody's clean. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. All right, now we're going to go in with a little bit of a pinky red blush on her cheeks. I'm just going to sort of tap that in. Same thing over here. These early uh, process of this always looks crazy. Like you don't see when I'm doing the speed how many times I stop and correct or or um, um, fix a problem that I've created. You can't see that because you know it goes too fast. But yeah, I do, I spend a lot of time buffing over, softening. Right now I'm taking pure pure white 
and I'm just softening up the whole thing. The nose is a little bit on the red side, so I'm going to want to come back and fix that. I wanted a little bit more blue, and um, I had too much red pigment in my brush. But that's okay. We can just sort of dust it off. It's good for an underneath anyway. All right. Let me cover up her hair. I'm going to go spray her, and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back and I have sprayed her and now I'm going to go in with um, just the blue tones that I was wanting to achieve and I found another brush. I Hopefully it is more clean. Yes, it is. And we are going to start to put our glasses on. We're going to start blending in some gray, gray tones around her nose. Um, she has quite a bit here over her eye. So I'm just going to go ahead and place that in. Of course, keep your, keep your clean-ish. I have white mostly in this one now, so it works good. And then she's got some gray here, down the side of her nose and under her eye. I think it's funny I picked a vampire. I don't actually didn't choose her, you know, for my uh, lesson, my speaking lesson, a slow lesson, whatever you want to call it. I didn't choose her in particular for this. It just happened to be the next doll in line to paint for commission. So she, uh, I just grabbed next, next doll, next. I am trying to finish up Claire, but I already had done so much. She would have been a good one to actually film, but I was not in the mood for filming that day. Some days you are and some days you aren't. All right. So you can see I'm getting a little bit more of a gray grayness to her. Let me get some more white. I want to touch white on top of her nose. Don't worry about those drops. Everything just sort of can be blended away. Um, one thing about Pam Pastel, when you're working with it, <clears throat> uh, when you spray it, the dark gets a little darker and the light kind of fades away. So you need extra light color and less dark color, if that um, makes any sense. You don't want it to be too, too dark, <clears throat> but you can always add extra light. She has some nice cheekbones there. I'm going to go ahead and add some white to that. Just sort of buff away any harsh lines. And I'm going to go back with some more gray. This The gray may take several times to build up because it's very, some things stick to the vinyl more than other colors. So you might have to do layers. And I do see when I'm looking at the picture that she has some, looks like gray and maybe a little bit of brown. So I'm going to grab some brown and mix that in with my gray on my hand here. Can you see that? Oh, you can see it. And just sort of touch that in. She's definitely going to need to be sprayed again so I can maintain this. All right, let's see. I have one here. Okay, I don't know what these tools are called. Oh, let me try to get to it. I don't know what these tools are called. They have a little fluff at the end. You can get them in the, I don't wanna, let me get a drink of coffee cause you know, mm, still really hot. You can get these in the hobby section where they do model, modeling, model painting. Uh, you can get them online, but you can get them at Hobby Lobby too. I'm sure you can get them at Michael's. 
So I'm going to come in here with some of that brown and start putting more color on there. I'm going to go back in and get some gray. Just whoop, start pushing in that color. Uh, painting with a tiny little cotton ball and I'm just gonna go straight in with black right now just want more pigment picture keeps disappearing my light wants to be really hot today Sorry, I'm being so quiet. I'm just kind of focusing on what I'm doing, trying to create the shape that I want. And uh, the picture doesn't really look anything like this Antoinette doll, so I'm going to be trying to reshape her so that she kind of looks like this picture. Whoa! You guys see that? <laughs> Whoopsies! All right, I'm going to draw in her eyebrows using this um, just to get where I want them to be. This is kind of a cool way of doing it too because if you make a mistake, you can wipe it away. Usually I use the brown or lighter color, but I'm just being really bold and going straight in with the little bit of black that I have on my little tool here so yeah you can definitely go in and mark your spot so that is what I'm doing I don't know if you're a repainter and you're watching this I always have trouble with that side of the eyebrow I, I just want to make it this too long crazy shape I don't know it's always been a problem so now I'm gonna look at I feel I feel like they're pretty close I mean from this angle I'll move her around and look but you kind of hers are a little bit longer probably because she's a vampire but generally I would go straight for the corner of the eye up Hers are a little, hers are pretty close. So. That's not too bad. I've shaped them in, so I'm going to go back in with some more black and keep building on her eye color here, her eyeshadow. I just want to keep building that black up. I'm going to have to go stop and go spray her again and then build more on top of it. It's just the nature of the beast. pretty shadowed here by her eyes. I did the same vampire girl years ago. Um, I can't remember the doll. Maybe it was, a, I think it was a Sydney. And somebody posted a picture. Jane, Janny, Jan, I think maybe has her. I hope I'm right. I think Jan has her. And she's, uh, and I was like, oh my God, I remember doing her. And here I am doing her again on a different doll. Of course, that doll wasn't white. And I didn't have pan pastels back then. Sorry, guys. Let me, ugh, I need a clean one. I need a one that has nothing. Oh, this is pretty good. Okay, I'm going to go in with white. And, uh. Can I do some blending there? And up here. Same deal on the other side. Let me grab some more black. 
Now that where where I get these pan pastels, um, I buy them. I got some fuzz. I buy them on Amazon, and I get the portrait set. That's the one that I I purchased because it had the most colors for for what I'm doing. Just keep pushing it. Hold up just a second. I, if I could just shove things back a little further. I'm just not having the space right now. Ay ay. Okay. Let's get back to it. of the white and give it a little bit of blending out the thing about trying to record things generally speaking when I'm doing this I have got this thing right up to my face but when I'm um, recording it I need to kind of hold it in a weird angle so it's awkward you know what I mean very awkward Okay, I have this brush. That's the one thing that does pick up a lot of fuzz. Let me, let me wipe it off on here and see if I have any. It looks pretty clean. This was from, I don't know, a makeup set of some kind. Probably eyebrows from, or um, eyeliner or an eyebrow kit of some kind. Just an inexpensive one. But I'm going to get some white. And lay that on top of the nose before I spray it. And I'm going to lay it here. Just hit a few spots before I go in there and give it another of color. Dust it off a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go spray again. Okay, she's sprayed again. And I still feel like she needs a lot more white on top of her just to Soften up and powder her down. All right. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, what are you guys doing today? Mm. Coffee, coffee, coffee. I have to have as much coffee as possible. Okay, I'm going to try. I want something. Everything's giving me a little grief, but that's normal. It's normal to have to keep on trying different tools. So um, if it's giving you trouble, you can't find the right tool for the job, just keep trying different things. And uh, one of them is going to going to work for you. I need I need the um, the black to come off a little bit better. So I'm looking for the tool that's going to work. Where are you? Let's try the no 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 let's try let's try this guy. We're gonna get some fill it up with some black to tap off the excess and come in oh yeah this one's speaking to me 
you never really know what you're going to need until you get in there. Um, every doll is different. So, but this one's really, this is really doing the job. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Uh, yeah, this is really working. So this is a blending stick, I think it's called. Again, um, any any place that uh, you shop for art supplies will have them in the drawing section. Kind of dust that a little bit. So yeah, you can get these by the packs. You can get them online too. I forgot I had all that white in there. That's okay. And let's give her an odd angle. further down than I wanted it to be. Kinda. All right, this is actually working pretty good. We haven't even picked up the paint yet, and we will. This is all sort of like laying the foundation uh, before we get into actually breaking into paint. Now I'm going to pick up, I really like this one. I think I like it better than these gray ones. They're not quite as soft, but I want to give her lips a quick outline. Hold on a second. Must dust. Let's see here. Can you see? Because I'm going to get right down in there and do this. Even. She kind of has like a sway lip. Like that. are so tiny. They're very little. Okay, and she has a nice fat bottom lip. The good thing about an Antoinette doll, and I didn't think so when I first saw her, is that she's very versatile. Like you can kind of make her look like almost anything. I've I've had some good experiences with the doll. I really I really like her. Um, I think she's a great doll. I really do. And she's definitely going to get the job done. This, this vampire is not showing teeth. I don't, I see like maybe a hint of teeth under there, but it's so minute that I'm, I think I might skip it altogether. Just going to go ahead and shape them out, and that's it. So, when deciding where, how far the lips go out, I'm going to, she's got a straight on gaze, so I'm going to look at her, where her eye would be, and it looks like it could come out just a tad more. That's black. Just like, it's like right, would be right there. So you're going to have her mouth come out just a tad more. To balance out the face. So there you go. 
Oh, it's a really, really pretty day here in Florida. Can you hear the birds? It's morning. What time is it? It is 8.30. 8.30 in the morning. And I am supposed to meditate, but I didn't do it yet. I just was excited about getting into this project. I'm going to use paint on this, so this is just me detailing it out, kind of prepping it. I want to use another one for, I think I use this one for white, so I don't want to mess it up. That one's too brown. Oh, that's part of the thing, too. You're just always digging for tools. What about this one? What about that one? Hmm. I use this one for, I wanted one that had like a little bit of pink on it. There it is. There it is. I want to put just a little bit, I'm going to pick up a little bit of gray too on top of that and put it right here. Okay, I'm getting like weird shadows, so I need to tilt her up a little bit. I'm doing that under her nose because that's how the how it looks in the picture and it's not a real person it's a actually a painting so I'm trying to copy a painting onto a doll face I was thinking about something um, the other day I was thinking about how I started an art from the beginning when I started I was I'm sorry if I have like pauses because you know, concentrating on this and talking at the same time is challenging, but, <laughs> um, this might be too dark, but we're gonna, we're gonna be bold and give it a try, because I want to bring in some, it's a little dark, it's a little dark, but it's giving me what I want. Anyway, when I started out as an artist, it was with mermaids. That was my first thing. I, I painted mermaids. You can still see mermaids on my website. I still paint them. Um, but I, I exclusively painted mermaids, fairies, anything fantasy art. And I was kind of known as the mermaid girl in the beginning. And I'm sure there's some people that still that, uh, that know me from way back then before I, I picked up dolls. But, uh, I, you know, I, I started with the mermaids. But then the dolls just sort of grabbed me pretty, pretty quickly. I mean, as soon as I saw one, I was like, what is that? And how do I do it? Because if you think about it, well, let me, let me go back. I was a, I was a cosmetologist, artist, always, always drawing and stuff like that. Loved doing faces and I loved doing hair. So I was a cosmetologist for a while, and um, I didn't like the hours of being a cosmetologist. I didn't like like that. And I had, Roxanne was little at the time. She was maybe four. And I just felt like I wasn't getting enough time with my child. So I decided, I made a decision. That lips look crooked. I made a decision to to just do like a desk job, a nine to five kind of deal. So that, cause I was working and I wouldn't come home until 8.30. And I, like a four year old goes to bed by then. Like I barely got to see her at night. Yeah, we had mornings together, but I don't know. I hated it. I really hated being away from her. And I made the decision to to uh, just take a desk job that allowed me weekends because I also worked weekends and stuff like that. Anyway, while while I was while I was doing the desk job and it was uh, it's not my favorite thing to you know, it was just a receptionist job. I wasn't making very much money. Sorry, coffee. I. Uh, how did I even start? I, I started listening to Tony Robbins. That's really where it all began. Um, I had some tapes and I'd had them for a while. 
And I decided to, oh, there's some blue on that. Let's get rid of that. Um, I was listening to Tony Robbins every day. It was like his original cassette tape kit. I was listening to that. And I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to follow through. And I remember one of the things he said to do, I mean, there was a lot of things he said to do, but one thing he said to do was write down what you want and just sort of put it away. And I put that I wanted to be an artist, you know, like a, like a paid artist. So I put that, I put that away along with a list of other just random things. One of them was a specific doll that I really liked and I wanted. It was a bell from uh, the Christmas collection, just a Barbie. I ended up getting two of those, ironically. And it seemed like everything on my list just, I, I ended up pulling that list out and almost everything on it, I, I had, I had it. I'm breaking into my pencils now. These are Prismacolor pencils and um, this is called Scarlet something. So I'm going to, I'm sort of all over the place, but that's always how I work. I just sort of come in all over the place. I'm still going to use paint, so I just like to sketch it all out and uh, apparently make mistakes. Because why wouldn't I? I am on being filmed right now, so everything is a little bit more difficult and... Uh, like, why wouldn't I make a mistake now? Anyhow, where was I? Oh, so I got that job and I was listening to Tony Robbins and um, out of the blue, my sister tells me about eBay. And I had never heard of it before, but she and mom, the time they lived together, uh, started an eBay Oh, you know, started selling on eBay. I guess that's what you call it. They started selling on eBay. And she told me, she was like, you should put your art on there. People put their art on there and they sell it like right away. Now, my dream was, is that I could work at home in my pajamas and make a living without having to leave the house because that's just who I am. I'm waving my arms around even though you can't see it when I talk I like to move my hands around and like I said I get a little distracted doing the um, doing the art and trying to talk so please forgive me I'm doing my best to try to focus on two things telling a story and working at the same time is not whoopsies it's not easy it's not easy not for me anyway so where was I Oh, oh, she told me about eBay. That's what it was. So eBay is, um, coffee. I'm ridiculous. I'm the worst storyteller ever right now. <clears throat> I'm going to grab another pencil. This is a Sanford, and I can't say that word, but you can see it. So it's one of the ultra thins, which is really good. Oh, I might need to sharpen it, but. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and outline her eyes. So I drew a mermaid, or maybe I had already had a couple of drawings. And I don't think I thought about selling original art yet. She just said they're selling print. So I was like, okay. So I went to like Walgreens, I think. And I scanned and printed out, I don't know, like maybe one or two pieces. And I mailed them to my sister and she sold them for me, which was pretty cool. Like immediately they sold fast. And uh, to be honest, I didn't think the art was that good looking back. But at the time, um, I'm sure it wasn't as bad as I, you know how it is. I've improved as an artist over the 20 years that I've been doing this, obviously. But it, it's, it was passion. I think that art is not just about how good you are, but it's also about the passion that you put into it as well. 
and I definitely had a passion for it. So I was so excited that this existed and I immediately plunged in full force and started doing, I have to sharpen my pencil, so I'm going to pause this for just a second. I started drawing, whoopsies, I started drawing mermaids and fairies and selling them on eBay. And I got into original pieces and it was just uh, fun. It was so fun for me. So what I did was I was still working. I still had my job. And I would go to work, come home, and, you know, watch... I didn't watch TV with the family. Wait, no. On Wednesdays, I didn't watch TV because Wednesdays was listing day. And back then, we had the old, you know, DOS, whatever you call it, computer that... Dial-up, that's what it was called, not DOS, dial-up. We had the whole old dial-up computer <coughs> that I would... Um, I'd have to spend forever... And on Wednesdays, I would list, and um, I would also watch in, the things close up and print, get my printed stuff ready for shipping or my originals ready for shipping. I did all that work, and I had a, I bought a printer, I bought um, a scanner, like everything that you would need to be able to just do it at home the whole nine yards and and it was going great I loved it so much and I did the painting at night when I was when everybody was asleep that's when I would go out on the porch and I would just paint mermaids and fairies and any other fantasy uh, and I started with the drawing I went into p watercolor pencils and then I went into um what did I go into? And then I tried real watercolors and I just sort of kept, you know, upping it. And and to learn, I didn't know how to look up anything on the internet. And even if I did, I don't think a lot of the information was available yet. Not like it is today. Like I go to the school of YouTube. Like this is the school of YouTube right here, isn't it? <laughs> but I go too. I'm always there. I'm always learning new techniques on all kinds of art. But back then, I went to the library. That's where I got my information. I picked up books at the library a lot. And I read up on how to, how to watercolor paint. So things were going pretty good. I did that for a year. And then I went to... Um, I, then I decided to leave my job. I could stay home with my child. By that time... She was already in elementary school, but I would be able to pick her up and not put her in any kind of daycare or anything like that, which I have to tell you, she wasn't that thrilled with. I was so excited to tell her the day, you know, this last day you have to go here. She kind of cried because she had friends and she wanted to stay there. So I was like, dang, sorry, sorry, Rox, but... Anyhow, I didn't have to go back to work anymore, and I have not gone back to work since then. Since the day that I decided to become a full-time professional artist selling art online. I built a little website, then I think I got, what's it called, um, micro, Microsoft Front Page, which at the time was a big deal. And learned how to use it and learned how to use Photoshop so that I could edit things and all that kind of business like I had a, a lot of learning to do but it, it was it mattered to me and I think if it matters to you you take the time you just do because it's important anything that is important I have to give a drink of coffee sorry Anything that's important to you, you will put the you will put the time into. So, yeah, that's that's how I started. And another year went by of me selling art on eBay. Well, eBay was really picking up the pace, and a lot of other artists were coming along, and my art's 
wasn't selling as well as it I mean it was still selling but it wasn't selling as well and I was getting a little worried about it because I tried to maintain a goal every week that at least matched my salary at uh, at uh, at my job you know of course you want it to be better but I wanted it to at least you know because I needed to bring money into the household so it was kind of I don't know maybe I wasn't keeping up with the talent of the people that were joining Facebook I mean not Facebook um, that was way before Facebook I wasn't keeping up with the talent that was coming on to um, eBay maybe they just really were getting some talented artists on there and even if I was able to keep up with the talent it also was probably because there was just so many of us you know and it just kept growing and growing and then you know like I said I was worrying I felt like I was having to produce more work to keep up with you know the money coming in and I was doing okay but like I said I was getting a little getting a little concerned and that is when my sister again because she was the one that told me about eBay she sent me an article she mailed it to me and it was a uh, doll artist that lived in Houston that was named Renee Coughlin and she was doing these dolls called one and only dolls so I looked her up online and I was just freaked out about this it's like so freaked out because I had never seen anything like um, that before and she was like she was the queen of it she was the shit she did um, Barbies and the fairies and mermaids and they were just so cool I mean really honestly they're still so cool so I um, tried to do the the fairies and the mermaids on the Barbies and I was just like really wanted to make it work and I kind of like joined some communities that had doll artists in them and you know I asked them like what am I doing wrong here because I just don't think I had the natural inclination toward when I could you would think it would be a perfect match but costume making and me at that time I just was not at that level getting pretty close to paint guys I think getting pretty close to paint this is a I didn't say what it was it is a faded but this is more like um a white not chalk maybe this one says what it is hold on there's another one white um charcoal there it is white charcoal sorry about that and i'll be coming back to those again but oh i kind of like how i have that one pulled out just a little bit more than the other one so i feel like i've got her sort of balanced out and ready for some paint I'm gonna go ahead and give her some pupils why not right get back to my story here in a minute anyway Renee had doll had Jean Marshall dolls on her site as well which of course didn't look like any Barbie I had ever seen and I really couldn't tell what size they were but I could tell that they looked like it could be bigger so that was some more research and um, found them on eBay and I think I can't remember what year it was but there was there was simply Jean is what was available at that time and I picked up my first one for $50 and she was a redheaded simply Jean and I already knew what I was gonna do with her as soon as she came you know right before that though I had talked to some of the people on the boards and I said do you think I could possibly paint just the faces 
because I'm not that great at costuming. I didn't have any experience at all in costuming. And even now, when I do do costuming, I always approach it like an artist and not like a seamstress. So I can do it, but it takes me a while and I really have to focus. I've got, uh, there's, you know, some of the other artists who are much, much better at sewing than I am, but I don't have a huge passion for it. And I think if you don't have a huge passion for something, you're not going to, you're just not going to do it as much. I wish I did though, because costume dolls are just awesome. But a lot of times what I do is I collaborate. I collaborate with some other girls and, um, or I buy costumes, you know, I commissioned them out and then that's how I get most of my costumes. But when it comes to like I did Drogo's costume and you have to look at that as being something that's super artistic. I was able to make his belt um, myself. There was just, it wasn't like really sewing. It was more, it was more creative. And I can make some pants. So uh, let's see, who else did I do? I did end up making a Daenerys full costume. And that was like a nightmare. It was so hard to do, but you know, I did enjoy it. See, I like the embellishing and the embroidery and the beading and things like that. It's the actual structured sewing that makes me go, eh, I don't know. I don't know about that, but I know I can do it if I really try, but you have to really, really want to. Yeah, I, I did make a gown and I really did want to make this a gown for Snow White from Once Upon a Time. And that's probably one of my very favorite things I've made. Um, it was beaded and white and beautiful. And I just, I really took my time with it. And I, and I loved the outcome of it. I really did. I enjoyed it. So every once in a while, I will want to do that. Okay, she has sort of a... Like, um, the way her nose comes down, it doesn't come out rounded like this. It's more like flat here, like a flatter, flat in the picture, flat, fat, fat. I don't know how, what, what else to say there. So I'm going to put some shadow down very slightly. This is probably way too dark. Let me find another one. But I don't want it to be red either. So I just pretty much erased it. Oh, this looks like black. Let's see if I can get some blue on there. You have to be so careful. Everything has to be so delicate. All right, that's pretty good. I'm getting there. Let me dust it off. Anyhow, I did, uh, for a minute, make some Barbies that were just celebrity faces. Like Natalie Wood, who's my favorite, Marilyn, um, who else did I do? I think the other one was Elizabeth Taylor. And then, of course, that's when I finally got my red-headed Jean Marshall, which was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen in my life when she, wa when she walked in the door. <laughs> when she when she came, I, I, I was just marveling over everything. She had like little pantyhose on and she was so big, like compared to my Barbies and she just felt different. She was like a porcelain doll made out of plastic. And vinyl and I was just immediately enamored I mean I was in love right away with that doll so in love so I painted her to look like Rose from Titanic because that was my favorite thing in the world at the time and uh, I thought it would be like an awesome I don't think anybody had done it yet I don't think anybody had painted a rose from Titanic so 
I may have been the first one. I don't know. I may have. Not sure. There was like a Barbie rose. And then there was a Franklin Mint rose. So obviously I'm not the very first one. But maybe the first one to do the the, the uh, Jean, the Jean Marshall is rose. Anyway, a nice try because it didn't it didn't really look like her at all. And I knew right away and it was it was such it was a passion project, but Lord was it not good. And um I know someone probably has that doll, so I'm really, really sorry if you still love her and I really appreciate that you do. But because I was going for something that I didn't achieve, I guess I felt like I had not done a very good job. Anyway, uh, it didn't matter at the time. I was completely, whoops, completely in love with repainting. That was sold hook, line, and sinker. That was my thing forever. Oh, still want a little bit more blush here. I'm trying to create the shape of a doll's face. Oh, she has a little bit of shadowing here. Let's see if I can get in there and do that before I go spray her. I think this is the last time I'm going to do this until after I paint her. So, um, I want to kind of get what I can in before I go do another spray. And I start with the paint. And I might break this up into, how far am I into this? <gasps> this is an hour long. Do you know how long it's going to take to upload? So, my first repaint on a 16-inch doll was the Jean Marshall redhead, simply Jean, that was Jessica. And there's another video I have on my YouTube channel where you can see Jessica. You can see a progression of my work at, from 2000 to, uh, to this, to last year. I don't have anything from 2018 on there yet, but you can look it up and through the years and see my first ever repaint on a 16 inch doll. It wasn't my first ever because I did some Barbies first, but anyhow, let's pause this and go spray her. And then the next thing we'll do is paint, which I think I might make a part two because it's going to be entirely too long. I'll try to edit down some content here, but catch me in part two for the actual paint on this doll. So I'm going to say, I'm going to sign off now. Bye, and I will see you in part two.